Yo, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on the final two parts of Crisis on Infinite Earths as well as the crossover as a whole. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Every week I will be talking about all sorts of geek stuff, whether it be movies or TV or sometimes comics, all of that. I'm here, but uh, anyways, let's get into this. Okay, so what did I think of Crisis on Infinite Earths, part 4 and 5? Um, I, I enjoyed watching them, but I, I gotta say I was a little disappointed with this crossover. I mean, it was definitely good, but for me, it wasn't everything they wanted it to be, everything they had led up to it. Some stuff just felt a little bit flat for me. You know, all the cameos and stuff were cool. There weren't as many in parts 4 and 5, which I thought was actually good. But, you know, sometimes I felt all of these cameos were just being thrown in there as pointless fan service. Now, as far as Ezra Miller's Flash goes, that was amazing. I loved seeing Ezra Miller's Flash pop up, meeting Grant Gustin's Flash. I had a smile on my face the entire time, and they weaved it into the story pretty well, but once in a while it could feel like all of these cameos and all of these fan service moments were hurting the overall story. Just with everything they had been leading up to with him, I, I would have liked something a little more special, a little more memorable, that really worked and you felt like you earned that and you could get emotional about it, like Iron Man snapping in Endgame, that's something I Feel, I get emotional about it. I I still, you know, I felt sad because it's Oliver and I, I've been with this character for eight years. But, you know, it, it didn't feel as big and as emotional as I think it could have. It, it, him holding the anti-monitor like this, I get it, he sacrificed himself to start the new universe. And that's alright, but... Just, just some of it, I feel like it could have been a little better. Now, episode 5, you know, it it was different. It was a change of pace. That's one thing I think this crossover had an issue with was carrying momentum. But all of the Earths kind of being merged into Earth Prime, I think that is amazing. Like, just having Supergirl's Earth and Earth 1... You know, being that main Earth, so now everyone's kind of on the same planet, Black Lightning as well. And then you get all of the other ones around with, like, Titans and Doom Patrol. I think all of that was extremely, extremely cool. The ending to Part 5 was nice with them having that little, you know, memorial for Oliver. And then having the Hall of Justice become a thing, that's exciting to me. That makes me want to watch the next crossovers that they do going forward. And so overall, I do not think this was a bad crossover. I definitely didn't hate it, and I actually enjoyed parts. But there was that, you know, issue with momentum and sometimes cameos cutting out story. But we did get some pretty great character moments. And... Although Oliver's journey wasn't exactly what I'd have liked to see, um, I, I respect what they did, and I think it works on levels. So, uh, anyways, Crisis on Infinite Earths is not my favorite crossover. I think Part 4 and 5 did a nice job of ending everything off, but I would probably put it behind Crisis on Earth X and Elseworlds. But uh, anyways, I want to know what you guys think of it down below because this is just my opinion. Let me know yours, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.